Yeah, that's me. No, not them. Yeah, him. You're probably wondering how I got into this situation. Well, it all started in October of 1958. This guy, called William Higginbotham, decided on a whim to create what is by many considered to be the first ever video game. We don't talk about Bertie the Brain. He drew up plans on what this revolutionary new media would show. Then he realized he worked on a 50s computer and a freaking oscilloscope as a monitor and had to scale down his ambitions a bit. He could have called the game anything. He ended up with a delightfully simple name, Tennis for Two. Since as opposed to real tennis, this had two players. This was the coolest thing ever. Early video game history is a truly fascinating subject and it's worth its own video for sure, but that's not what this video is about. You see, things went smoothly the next 18 years, with Pong and Puppy Pong. But then, some scumbag degenerate moron decided to ruin the fun for everyone and made a violent cabinet where you run over people with a car. Good golly, the parents were upset. It again sanctions practice, training, learning how to hurt, kill other people to use those skills that they have. And suddenly Pandora's box was opened, paving the way for more violence in gaming. If you drive LA traffic, and I'm a deliverer myself, you, know, you get tired of pedestrians. And these little things, you know, kind of remind me of pedestrians. Looking at the game now, it is very strange how anyone could have seen this and thought it was remotely bad. Except maybe the scream. The scream is a little freaky, I'll be honest. Got him. Ow, my head. Well, I should go rest for a while. We'll talk more later, okay? Right now I need to... I need to... Harvest. Yummy. Cheeseburger. And there I was in an unfamiliar town named Harvest, made out of 90s CGI and crusty FMV. I couldn't remember my name. All I could remember was that I didn't know my name. I didn't even know anyone in town, but they apparently know me. And they won't believe that I have amnesia poop. They tell me my name is Steve, that I'm marrying a girl named Stephanie in three weeks, and that I need to join the Order of the Harvest Moon, stationed in the Lodge. I guess I need to talk to the townsfolk if I want to get an idea on how to leave this place. I began with my so-called mom. Well, hello there. How about some cookies? There's plenty of rejects in the trash. <laughs> Your little brother is homesick from school today and I won't have you scaring him with this amnesia poop. But no matter what I said, I couldn't get through to her. In a sheer act of frustration and desperation, I uttered a single word. What a thing to say to your mother. Was that an invitation, now that your father is out of action? What? Yeah, how about it? Maybe later, dear. Dang, I'm so angry I'm punching the air. Can I punch my mom? I'm just curious. I'll give her a little tap. Whoops! Yes, officer? She tripped over and landed head first in a bowl of spaghetti. Really quite sad, actually. I'm gonna go now. Damn it! Somebody help me! See, she's fine. What do you people want from me? Too late for that, boy. Boy? I've only been here for- Who are you? You look like Leonidas cosplaying as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, it's a decent cos- Did you just- Are you gonna kill me or are you gonna risk me up? Stay tuned, buckaroos. There's more to come on Range Riders Cowboy Roundup. This guy's me so right now. So don't go away. Check my rating, son. Violence is entertainment. I just put it on the air. If some kid watches, that says something about the kid, not me. Oh, shit! Ow! Oh, shit on a stickeroo! The politics of honey. The Judeo-Christian rites of sacrifice. Alright, so this is Wasp Lady, also known online as Wasp Mommy 53. She goes on different subreddits and writes 2,000 word ranting spiels on why wasps are superior to bees because she's butthurt that the world doesn't prefer these raging, stinging, rip-off creatures. Stupid. More slender. More aerodynamic than the bee. She goes on for ages and ages and it's very uncomfortable and I hate her and... And the muscular contractions in their thorax as they pump venom could be likened to the muscular contractions of ejaculation. 
You make a good point, but I'm sorry. I'm still gonna have to kill you. Oh my god. Oh, oh, hell my god. No, no, no. Hello, Steve. How's the husband to be? Um, you know, I've been better. Her daddy's worried about getting his meat. So if I were him, I'd be more concerned about Stephanie getting some meat. I don't even know you. You always were a kidder, Steve. I'm Mr. Johnson, remember? Great conversation. Let's see if we can find someone who isn't incredibly awkward to talk to. Adult education is a wonderful thing, as is adult quality tribe. Come on. Wait, did the voice actor just sigh? Quality tribe. That's totally it. He's totally done with this crap. I'll admit DNA's done and does good business. But money isn't everything to a woman. Can money keep you warm at night? Can you wrap your thighs around it? Rig bloody gashes in its back with your painted hollered fingernails? Edna? Edna? Edna Fitzpatrick. Why did I come back here? Women in town. I declare. No, I want to leave. I want to leave. And Edna, well, she needs a good hard penis. Oh, okay. Well, have fun staring at that Tucker for the rest of your life, you Tucker fucker. Bye! Loomis here is my deputy. Mainly Loomis answers the phone and babysits the office while I'm out. Though sometimes he likes to go in the back and stain the jail mattress. That could be anything. It probably just means coffee stains. Why, you sure ought to appreciate what a man's gotta do sometimes in a parked car or waste high knot hole in a tree. You know, I'm beginning to see a pattern here. And now he wants us to buy him porn. He's so audacious that I almost don't even hate him. This is Mr. Pastorelli's barbershop. This guy is sitting on nothing, and this farmer guy likes to talk about aliens. He also tells us about Pastorelli's barber pole. Brought it all the way over from Italy, wrapped all special like. Installed that alarm system just to protect it. Though who in tarnation would want to steal a worthless piece of junk like that? I don't know. Maybe them aliens, Clem. Son, after nailing an alien. I'm sorry? Never go back to Quail. What? Oh, you think you can get uh, all right. Sorry, I just thought you were like the others. Oh no, I found it. This is where Black Shadow must keep his meat grinder. I can't get over that walk. It's too goofy. You're kidding me! That's despicable! Shit, I was looking for answers and all I found was Mr. Plinkett's secret cat meat factory. There's a dead cat on the counter! All that meat hanging in the background? For those cats as well? Steve, how's your father? Is he better? Uh, about the same I guess. My father? Oh, about the same I guess. Also, why is there a dead cat on your counter? He's been away from work for weeks. I wonder why. This is a fine kettle of fish, I must say. Cats, actually. What's with all the cats? This is a slaughterhouse or a kennel? What's with the cats? Actually, never mind. Tell me more about my father. Isn't there some kind of health department that keeps tabs on these things? Lord forbid I get any Yersinia or E. coli in my cat meat. Once you take over the business, you'll realize <coughs> the importance of maintaining quality while saving <coughs> costs. We know what we're doing here. If we didn't. Would the lodge use us to kill Nah, nah, I'm gonna make sure that you won't be able to hurt another cat again. Uh-oh, he has a knife. Okay, so this is the combat. He doesn't even sound hurt, he just sounds mildly annoyed. Finally. Ah oh, shoot man, them mattress staining harvest gangsters are at it again. I wonder who they electrocuted today. You're under arrest for the murder of Pat O'Reilly, Steve. My bad. This is your first arrest, Steve. You just remember, we've got a three strikes, you're out rule here in Harvest. Ah yes, how could I forget about the classic three strikes and you're out rule? I believe that is under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 19. He even drove me home. How nice. Tuck me in, Dwayne.
Meat is the foundation of any decent society. Everyone needs at least three servings of red meat a day. And anyone who says otherwise is a commie. Hello, Steve. Have you floss today? You look exactly like my mother. Like, I'm certain that's just my mom in a wig. Honestly, you men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. Trust me, coming from Steve, that's a compliment. Sorry. You'll have to ask Mrs. Potsdam for permission to see Stephanie. She's in the kitchen. <laughs> Hey Stephanie, I am the only other person that's normal here in Harvester. Oh, bitchin. Do you remember anything? Just burgers. Damn it. Stephanie, I think you should know. There's a peephole hidden behind the picture in the bathroom. You mean a peephole? That's literally what I just said. But don't misunderstand, I only know this because... Wait, no? I, no, I don't know that. I never even went to the bathroom in this playthrough. Steve is just telling a lie for no reason that just so happens to be true because like half the town are damn perverted creeps. Wait, hold on. Steve, what are you doing? Making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't spread over every egg. Uh, how did I... Oh, it's you. Only initiates may enter the hall of the order. Did you say something? I did not speak, but my mind touched yours. Telepathy? But how? That voice to the left of much man lives with my voice sector. Did you know we shared the same voice sector? Wait, really? You may find it difficult to obtain an application. When you do, however, bring it to me. And what if I don't wanna? Only within this lodge can the truth be found. Alright, fine, I'll do it. Whether you do or not matters <laughs> little to me. So now you're wondering, how do I get into the lodge? Well, it's actually quite simple. You see, the game gives you a hint that a penny saved is hardly worth the effort. So of course, the first thing you have to do is find 25 cents. Really cool and brave of them to steer you in the wrong direction and subvert your expectations. Then you pay for the porn and give it to the old pervert so that you can steal a gas can. Hello, Steve. Uh, where's Loomis? Have you? Wait, no, no, no! You pervert! No! Setting up the match again! Folding up the towels! No, I ain't trying to snipe out! Then you trade the gas can for a large application and that's pretty much it. Time for bed. Come on, Steve, I'm trying not to get age restricted here. Yeah, lots of impressions to digest. Speaking of digestions... I don't even care anymore. Just tell me where I have to go. Whoa, whoa, chill man, chill, chill. Hey, you, out there, beyond the wall. It's the 90s. Video games have evolved from this to this. With every passing day, games became more real. And that gave people wanting censorship or at least regulation in the video game market more ammunition. We had games like Night Trap, Mortal Kombat, and a bit later, Doom. Nintendo censored the SNES port of Mortal Kombat by removing the blood and gore. Sega did the same thing, but added a fucking cheat code that added the gore back. Like, imagine if Nintendo sold Mario like, Oh, no, 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 this game is rated E for everyone. See? No violence here. And then you activate the cheat code and Mario gets a gun and starts shooting everyone and swears. <laughs> and goes out with prostitutes. Well, anyway, now that you're hopefully a bit more familiar with the time frame, let me introduce you to a man named Gilbert P. Austin. There are people who are against censorship. There are people who are very much against censorship. And then there is Gilbert Austin. I'll let this quote speak for itself. I was pissed off at all the bullshit about violence in media. I saw it as censorship, which is an um, anathema which is anathema to any artist. When I read about some violence being edited out of classic Warner Brothers cartoons, the guns, the explosions, I was deeply outraged. Those cartoons are some of the funniest goddamn short films ever made. As classic as Casablanca or Citizen Kane in my book. And it effective sub more on the turkey to pawn itself to cut those masterpieces to somehow save the ill little shillings from being corrupted 
deserves to be tried and executed for crimes against humanity. An exaggeration, perhaps. Unless he's cutting the last print, in which case I mean it literally. But you get my point. Gil has a hatred for censorship as strong as his affinity for the gory and the shocking. When he was approached by Future Vision, he figured a small game company could use something to stand out. So he jotted some basic idea for the new game in about 30 minutes, which was at least partially formed as a response to the zeitgeist around violence in media. This is the video game that ignited the controversy. The game was called Harvester. After some delay, the game was released in 1996, and promptly bankrupt Future Vision a year later. Guess the future wasn't very bright for Future Vision. I can't say for sure it was all Harvester's fault, but the game did not do well. According to Gil himself, the game was mainly advertised on radio, which is, you know, it's not all bad though. Throughout the years, the game has built up a pretty dedicated cult following. It's a unique game for sure. I like the goofy parts, and the gore is mostly too cartoony to bother me too much. I could go for less cats with guts leaking out though. Like, come on, what did they ever do? Oh, and Gil? No bad blood about me censoring the cat, right? Well, anyway, I'll go back to being dead now. Alright, I came prepared. Just lay it on me. What do you want me to do? What tasks have you laid out for me? Are you even listening? Oh, you can go in now. What? Just like that? Aren't you supposed to give me like four or five more tasks? You know, scratch the car? I haven't even stolen the barber pole yet. Look, you have all of like three people in cold blood. These tasks are meant to desensitize you. But honestly, now they just seem like a waste of time. Uh, well, one of them were arguably in self-defense, even though I started it. Well, come on now, I don't have a day. I, I feel cheated. I'm supposed to earn this, but you're already calling me a monster? Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, alright. As your final task, you have to, um, show me a funny meme. If I deem it good enough, you may shake your ass and pass. Oh, that's all? Well, easy peasy. You'll love this, I guarantee it. Hey guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. I know I cut out a lot from uh, the game story. It gets uh, pretty messed up uh, during those later days, I know. But I hope I still got to show off just how insane this game gets. If you want to see a continuation of this video where I actually explore the lodge, then you can like, leave a comment, subscribe, tell a friend. And I might get to it eventually. I'm feeling pretty done with Harvester at the moment. Also, special thanks to Rocky Time for doing the voice of the Sergeant at Arms in this video. You can find a link to his Twitter in the description. Also, I'm sorry for giving you that particular voice. I know that voice can be pretty draining on your throat. Uh oh. Man, fuck you for ruining my throat. I'm gonna ruin yours. Suck my fucking dick, bitch.